Today, I, I will start with a very basic case. This is not a tricky or challenging case, but it's good for learning. Um, and the topic is very familiar. The uh, glaucoma, just optic neuropathy, and uh, we talk about how uh, can we approach, how can we interpret the findings of the optic from a patient. Uh, this is a 41 year old female patient referred from uh, optometrics. She has a history of uh, family history of uh, glaucoma. Her sister was diagnosed with glaucoma before, and she went to the optometrist for the glasses change, and they found some suspicion of glaucoma so they sent the patient to Sinai and uh, she admitted uh, some intermittent headaches um, before visiting the optometrist and on examination her vision was normal the pressure was normal too she has a uh, quite thick cochlea and uh, in anterior segment examination uh, I found some amount of uh, relative length-induced pupillary block. And uh, on the audioscopy, uh, I found the narrow angle. And I could only see the top of the trabecular meswork. Now, this is the anterior segment OCT of the patient. Is there anyone here want to comment on these pictures? I can have a go, Tom. It's yeah. Vanessa. Yeah. Um, so anterior segment of the left eye um, showing a relatively shallow AC, 2.11 millimeters. Um, and then there's some maybe slight, actually don't know how to compare the horizontal line and the closing of the angles, but they look quite open. Um, and the lens vault doesn't look particularly high. Um, and in the right eye, uh, quite similar findings. Again, very shallow AC, angles look open, the lens doesn't look too vaulted forwards, um, and a thicker CCT in that right eye. Good. So we can see uh, an open but narrow angle and quite shallow AC um, in this patient. And uh, this is the optic disc. Is it normal? Anyone want to interpret the findings? of uh, the optic disc. Uh, I'm happy to go again if, if no one wants to volunteer. Um, bilateral color fundus photos centered on the disc. Um, they're very symmetrical looking. Uh, the cup to disc ratio, I think it's a bit hard to tell the size, but I wonder if the discs are a little bit on the larger side and the cup to disc ratio is probably about 0 0.75, 0 0.8. Uh, but the rim that's left uh, looks quite healthy. Um, I wonder in that right eye, maybe a little bit of an inferior notch there um, compared to the left side. It's ex excellent. So um, the disc generally looks okay, but we can see the cupping is abnormal because we can see the lamina quadrosa. And especially here, we can see the angulation of the vessel. So this is a quiet cup, and this is a thinning of the neuroretinal rim. And when the vessel cross this area, we call that bionetting vessel. And this is the um, early changes of the glaucoma disc in both eyes. So by looking at the, uh, the rim, we can see it normal because the thickness looks okay. But by looking at the vessel and the depth of the cup and the appearance of the bottom of the cup, we can see this is the glaucoma disc in a very early time. And this is the visual field. Mm. 
Nira, do you have any idea about the field? Nada? Um, yeah, so the right field has got some scattered kind of non-specific uh, loss inferiorly, um, maybe a slightly enlarged blind spot. Uh, the left eye also has some scattered peripheral loss, but I'd say within normal limits. Yeah, I agree. The visual field looks quite normal. Uh, because the change of the optic disc is early, so we can call this patient is a kind of preperimetric glaucoma patient. And this is the uh, structural function correlation. We, uh, anyone wants to man on the OCT? Nira? I don't think Nira can unmute and still stay on Zoom. Just a comment to him. I don't think we can say that the fields are 100% normal. You know, especially that right eye, mean deviation is minus 3.15, VFI is 96%. If you look at the DIS, there is definitely some, you know, inferior arcuate change, which would correspond to the superior disc rim thinning. But I agree, it's not as the fields are actually a bit better than what the, the disc and the OCT would imply. Does anyone want to comment on the OCT findings? I'm going to start picking on people. Andrew. Or oh, Vanessa, you can take the lead on this one. Do you want to comment on the OCT? Uh, yep. Yeah. So um, on the OCT, there's... Uh, quite thin random nerve fiber layer, both eyes. Um, so in the right eye, um, particularly superiorly and inferiorly, there's sort of loss of neuroretinal rim. Um, and similarly on the left eye, um, superiorly and inferiorly. Um, and there is some matching uh, ganglion cell layer changes um, in both eyes. Yeah, I agree. We can see some... Uh very typical thinning of the nerve fiber layer um, in the uh, superior and inferior uh, quadrant. And um, uh, th this, this is um, matching with the, the optic disc that we saw above. And uh, finally, the patient was diagnosed with primary angle closure glaucoma and because of uh, some uh, relative uh, land induced pupillary block components. So I did the bilateral PI uh, for the patient on the same day. And then the patient was commenced on Zalatan once a day at night. And then um, we will see her in about six months with a repeated OCT and visual field. So I will talk about glaucoma disease assessment. Um, um, about classification of the disc damage likelihood and about uh, the GONE project. So uh, about uh, glaucoma disc assessment, we have a formula uh, initiated by a research group earlier. And um, this is uh, called 5R formula. So when approaching a disc, uh, we need to evaluate the ring, the rim, retinal nerve fiber layer, retinal and optic disc hemorrhage, and the region of peripapillary atrophy. The first step, we have to observe the scleral ring to identify the limits of the optic disc and its size. Uh, in this patient, we can see the difference in both eyes 
and the right eye is a a larger disc with the larger cup disc ratio and uh, thinner neural retinal ring. And the difference between the cup disc ratio in both eye is due to the disc size and also the uh, glaucoma uh, effect of the uh, retinal ring. About the rim, uh, we have to define where is the rim. That is the area between rim outside and the cup inside. And the rim is even more important than the cup disc ratio. In this patient, we can see an inferior notch and uh, a corresponding nerve fiber layer defect with the color changes comparing to the surrounding retinal tissue. And uh, for the rim thinning, there is a very interesting sign I discussed above. We, we call that bionetting vessel. So when the, the local rim thinning, reaching the disc margin, um, the sharpened rim appears. And when the vessel crossing the sharpened rim and being bended sharply at the this edge, then we have bionetting vessel, which is um, a very typical sign of glaucoma disc that we saw in uh, the patient. And in the third step, we examine the retinal nerve fiber layer. And uh, here we can see in the both optic discs, uh, in color fundus and uh, in uh, the um, the black um, um, the red green fundus, we we see the uh, color changes of the nerve fiber. And when the focal loss of the neural retinal rim, uh, the neural retinal tissue happen, it can cause the nasal shift of the uh, vessel, we can call that the nasalization of the retinal vessel in glaucoma. And uh, the fourth R, we uh, look at the region of the, para, the parapapillary atrophy. There are two types of uh, the atrophy, um, zone alpha and zone beta. And uh, uh, the beta zone is uh, present in many eyes with glaucoma. And in this patient, we can see the beta zone is larger and closer to the, the optic disc margin. And finally, the disc hemorrhage, this is a very important sign of uh, progression. It's uncommon, but when we see the disc hemorrhage in a glaucoma patient, it means that the disease is worse. And um, corresponding with uh, the, the nerve, um, with the, the optic disc hemorrhage, we can normally see um, the thinning of the nerve fiber layer. And this is the uh, disc damage likelihood scale, which uh, was first introduced by uh, an American uh, glaucoma researcher, uh, they uh, uh, classified the um, glaucoma disc progression into 10 stages and based on the width of the, the rim. And this is a good classification for us to evaluate the change of uh, glaucoma disc. And um, we can base, we can use this classification to draw um, our optic disc when we uh, see the patient. This is a new uh, um, disc damage likelihood scale. Um, so instead of um, the old classification, they uh, give um, the new number to uh, each stage of the glaucoma progression. 
and uh, they did many researches on uh, this classification to uh, evaluate the validation and the, the 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 value of of the classification, and uh, they all agree that the DDRS has significant uh, correlation with uh, some other. Uh, structural and functional measurements of glaucoma. And finally, I uh, talk about the GON project. This is an Australian made project of a group from uh, University of Melbourne. And uh, when you uh, sign up for an account, you can do different tests by evaluating different aspects of uh, the optic disc. And I think this is a good source of uh, learning material for the resident, the registrars who are interested um, in glaucoma. And uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.